the things that would make a good speaker are a thorough understanding of parliamentary rules and procedures uh, and a willingness to be completely nonpartisan. Now, if those are two important criteria, I would suit both of those for sure. And I think most members of parliament know that I am uh, less partisan, certainly than most members of parliament, certainly <laughs> more nonpartisan than any other party leader, and that I want parliament to work because I love the institution and I respect our institutions and want to see them elevated and not degraded. Green Party leader Elizabeth May spoke with the CBC's Hannah Thibodeau today there. She admitted she would be interested in running for the job of Speaker of the House of Commons. We're back with the power panel, Marcella, Amanda, Ginny, Daniel and Chris. Chris? What do you think Isn't of the idea? Small, for, uh, <laughs> uh, well, I'll say this. For awesome, folks yeah. who don't know, she spends more time in the House of Commons than oh, any God. other MP by a massive margin. Yeah. So she wouldn't be a, she wouldn't be an absentee speaker. Um, you know, the nonpartisan observation is interesting. I, I, I'm sure she feels all the party leaders fail to measure up on climate change, um, but she's got her moments, mm -hmm. and she is a good student of parliamentary procedure. <laughs> um, but she can't be a party leader at the same no. time. So no. uh, it'll be interesting how she manages that because only a caucus of three. She's not an official party leader, um, but I, you know, I, I'm glad she's going to put her name for it. I think there's only been one female speaker, and it was Jeanne Sauvé, and that's, you know, a couple of decades ago. Yeah. Do you think, Amanda, that there is a chance it works? Like, would the government support that, do you think? <laughs> I mean, I think for sure I think there's a chance and I think and I kind of like the idea. I think when you're faced with what she's faced with right now, when you look at the results of the Green Party and and you can give her credit for, you know, bringing in more seats and uh, but you still know that, you know, she really fell short of expectations. So the question is, what's next? What's next for Elizabeth May? What's next in terms of her leadership of that party? There were questions heading into this election. There's certainly questions coming out. And so this position actually I kind of like it. Um, I kind of like the idea of her maintaining sort of a, a role that's high profile. Uh, I, I agree with Chris. I think that she has sort of the ability to call upon all of those parliamentary procedures that are obviously required in this role. But she also has, you can sort of picture her at the helm, you know, laying down the law and making oh, sure yeah. that there's decorum in the House where we've really seen, and, and we, in some ways we really have seen a dissolution of that. We've seen um, some of the, the banter amongst members has become, you know, downright difficult to listen to. So part of me would just like to see the dynamic of her in the chair responding to what's been happening in the House. Jenny, what do you think? I'm of two minds. On the one hand, I, I agree with the part of me that, like Amanda, is kind of like loves the image of this. And I think that's the part that so many Canadians are drawn to about Elizabeth May, that she's yeah. this sort of bookish intellectual. She's not afraid to kind of quote things at you in a way that you know, a politician would traditionally think is alienating, but is actually super endearing. And I think that part of her would like, you know, read up and like learn the precedent and just totally. love it and revel in it. Yeah. Um, but there's also this almost like tut tut school marmish element of her nonpartisanship that I think would actually be really grating in an environment where I think partisanship can and should thrive um, within a, like a reasonable, respectful context. So I don't know, I'm torn, but I like the idea. I like thinking about it. Marcella, what do you think? Uh, I'm, you know, I, I've always thought Elizabeth May and her reputation, how everyone sees her in the in the Ottawa area, is a little bit different than the rest of Canada. Um, I thought it was interesting that the way she framed it today. I mean, I I remember during the campaign when Elizabeth May uh, took a day to take shots at, at Andrew Scheer, uh, saying that his move from speaker to party leader was, you know, inappropriate. And so I think it's a little bit odd for her mm -hmm. to now it's sort of put on this Captain Canada uh, point. Yeah. tape and say that she can do it because why? Because she's better at it than Andrew Scheer. Um, and, and, and it also speaks to another, I think, fallacy that the, Green, the Greens like to tell themselves that they're not partisan. I mean, they are a political party. Mm -hmm. they, did, they did run uh, probably the most aggressive campaign they've run in history. Uh, so they have three seats, uh, but they still didn't do as well as, as no. either the polling or the pundits thought they would leading up to the election. Uh, maybe she doesn't really want to have that conversation. Um, I don't really know strategically either. We are in a minority parliament why the Liberals uh, would go for that. I think the NDP won't want it for obvious reasons. They don't need the former Green leader having that kind of stage. 
Um, I don't think the Conservatives would mind. They'd probably think it was pretty fun. But if you think about strategically what the Liberals have to do in the next couple of years to hold on to power and how that's going to work out for them, I'm not sure that they can take a risk with having someone like Elizabeth May, who's, who's quote unquote not part of the team, uh, on the seat. We've seen how that hasn't worked out all so well all the time for the NDP in British Columbia, where they've had some real challenges, not so much with the Speaker's role in the House, but the role the Speaker's tried to play outside the House. It's caused them headaches and headlines for months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a hard one even to follow. Uh, Danielle? Yeah, no, it's interesting. I was talking to, uh, to a Liberal uh, from the Prime Minister's office yesterday who was saying, you know, we're going to have to put one of our people because it's unlikely that someone else from another party is going gonna, is gonna to jump in the race for Speaker. Now, that changes something. I don't know mm -hmm. if they're that that keen on keeping all their votes on their side to go there. I, I tend to agree uh, with what was said earlier about the, the risk that's associated with that. And, and uh, I also see that uh, for Miss May as, as, a, as a smoother way out if she decides mm -hmm. to leave the leadership of the Green Party, as it's been hinted several times mm -hmm. by, uh, by her. It, it, it would be a nice transition, a nice way out mm -hmm. for her. I just um, say, Peter Milliken was a very effective speaker in minority governments led by Stephen Harper, and he was a liberal, so it's not impossible to have yeah. somebody who's not part of your agenda or part of your party uh, in that position. Uh, but the other thing that's, uh, that's kind of interesting, if you're the liberals, um, you may want someone who's not in the party. Jeff Regan, sorry, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm sure he would like the job, he was a good speaker, but... <laughs> and I tried to get his take, and have, he, he didn't a, respond yeah, to the calls, didn't yeah. <laughs> Having a competition for the job, it is an elected position of all the members, you can mm. all, so we'll see how it works out, but uh, uh, Elizabeth May is an interesting challenge it, and it is a way for her to move off and allow someone else yeah. to take over the Green Party. Yeah, Amanda, I wanted to get your take on that too, because I mean, the larger issue here is the future of her <laughs> leadership. She is, unlike Andrew Shear and Jagmeet Singh, not insisting that she will be staying on indefinitely as leader, right? She is, or, or saying that he, she even wants to. Uh, she hasn't yeah. said anything specific about what might happen, but do you think that uh, that her leadership is in uh, in peril? Definitely. And I, I think that there were rumblings heading into the, the election, I think falling short of expectations when really felt like there was some momentum throughout that campaign and then really failing to kind of deliver on that momentum. Certainly there will be a leadership question. And while I think she's proven to be a good leader, I do think that she's even signaled um, whether or not she wants to maintain that role. So I agree with what's been said that this would be a nice transition in many ways to uh, to a career that, that has been thought and has been effective, but probably not as effective as the Green Party needs it to be heading into the next election. Marcella, you kind of winced there at one point. Well, I just Why? don't, th I don't think the speaker, especially in a minority parliament, I don't think the speaker is going to be the retirement program for a leader. Um, I, think that we, I think that we're all being very high-minded right now, but I, you know, I, I think there's a lot of calculation that's going to go into who the speaker yeah. is. Um, and I think that each party is going to make their own assertion. And so I just, when I start doing that math, I don't, I don't know that I think she's going to get the majority of the House. So the other question you have to ask yourself is this how she wants to kind of go down. Uh, Ginny, last word to you. Yeah, I think the Green Party needs to figure out what it's all about. Like, there's an existential question the Green Party has to have. They've got some weird provincial representation in different parts of the country now. Um, that's disparate. They've got a leader federally they've had for a really long time. If you're young, if you're a new voter, the Green Party to you is kind of Elizabeth May, and then there's provincial representation. I mean, a youthful, and mm -hmm. not necessarily young, but a new dynamic leader could bring okay. like a whole breath of fresh air to the Green totally Party agree. and give them a whole new lease on life. So I'm curious to see where it goes. Having a, green in the chair, get... having a green in the chair doesn't hurt either, just for the symbolism no, of it doesn't all. doesn't hurt. Yeah. We <laughs> shall see. Thanks, everyone. Thanks to our power panel this evening, Amanda Alvaro, Ginny Roth, Marcella Monroe, Danielle Thibault, and Chris Hall. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.